Proverbs 27. We'll, we'll look at a few verses in chapter 26 first. We looked at chapter 26 last week, and I mentioned that the, the title in my Bible for that chapter is Fools, Sluggards, and Busybodies. That's pretty much, pretty much covers it. Um, a lot of things there, and verses uh, 4 and 5 are good to keep in mind. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Now, the difference is the situation. Uh, sometimes you need to just not answer him. <laughs> Other times, because of the situation, you, need to, you do need to answer. In uh, verse 16, he said, The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a, re a reason. <laughs> lazy people are very clever as to why they're, they're lazy. Uh, verse 20, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceaseth. Talking about uh, busybodies. We need to be careful that we uh, guard our words. Tonight, we're just looking at a few verses from chapter 27. This is uh, probably one of the Proverbs that most people are familiar with. Now, let's just read verses 1 and 2 to start. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger not thine own lips. Just, just stop reading there. I hope we know that, in general, boasting is just kind of a foolish thing to do. You know, if, if you've been around a person who boasts, it just it doesn't come across very well, and, and it has no real good purpose because, I mean, really, what's the basis of boasting? Uh, it, it's pride, you know, self-promotion. Uh, the one that I always think of is... Cassius Clay, a boxer when I was a kid, you know, he, he kind of made it popular to, for athletes to boast. Now they all do. You know, they do something, they go like that, and you think, come on, bring back the humility. Uh, it's foolish to boast. You'll see some people where they'll, they'll boast about what's going to happen. And, you know, boasting in, in general is foolish. To boast about the future is especially foolish. <laughs> we just can't tell the future. And there's been many an athlete who's said he'd do something and uh, didn't do it. Um, and there's been many a person who's said, this is what's going to happen in my future. Uh, this is my vision. And uh, the Bible says there's, there's just no guarantee. In uh, James chapter 4, verse 13, again, another very familiar portion of Scripture. Uh, he says, Go to now ye that say, Today or tomorrow we'll go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. <laughs> now that's pretty plain, isn't it? Now he says we're, we're not to boast. And we're particularly not to boast about our future. Some people make this mistake even spiritually. Well, Pastor, I'll, I'll get saved someday. And uh, someday doesn't always, always come. Uh, Christians, well, I'll, I'll obey the Lord someday, or I'll obey the Lord, and they, they have a certain thing that has to happen. You know, when I, when I get really old, like, you know, 20, 30, <laughs> uh, we often think we have plenty of time, and we need to be careful. It's, it's foolish to boast. It's particularly foolish to boast about the future. But praise is a good thing, isn't it? Uh, if you've ever had someone rightly praise you, you know, I'm not talking about people who are just trying to butter you up because they want something from you. Uh, but praise is a good thing. And he says there, let another man praise thee, not thine own mouth. We don't have to boast. Uh, even a stranger, you know, a stranger, not th thine own lips. And let me say this. It's okay to accept praise. You have somebody compliments you on something you've done? I can remember as a young man, you know, somebody might praise me about something, and, and you try to be real spiritual about it, you know, and blah, 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 you know, kind of thing. Really, all you have to say, it's really simple. Thank you. That's all you need to say. You don't have to give some big spiritual explanation. If someone compliments you and praises you, it's okay. Do watch out that it doesn't lead to pride, though. Um, sometimes... 
criticism is easier to deal with than praise. <laughs> uh, verse 21 of this same chapter has an interesting take on it. As the finding pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Now think about that for a minute. He's talking about a crucible. He's talking about refining something. Now what happens when you refine something? Uh, it, it, it brings out what's precious, but it also brings out the, the junk, doesn't it? So be careful you know, which way you go there with, uh, with praise. Uh, praise is a good thing. And on the other hand, we should give praise when it's due. You know, we're often quick to criticize. Uh, we need to be careful that we, we praise as well. Now, we kind of live in a generation where we praise everything. And uh, that, can, that can be a problem. But if you look at uh, Proverbs 31, verse 28, he gives a particular example of it. Proverbs 31, 28, talking about uh, a godly woman, says her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Men, you can praise your wife. God says that's, that's all right. We can do that. Uh, verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. That's good. Uh, there's a verse back in chapter 25, verse 14. I'm going to go back to verse 31 in just a minute there. But um, Proverbs 25, verse 14, he says, Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. <laughs> you know, a person, person boasts about something that's not really true. You know, everybody knows, but, uh, but them, I guess. Well, verse 31 of, of chapter 30, 31, Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So this is not talking about false praise. Uh, this is talking about the, the character and accomplishments uh, of a godly woman. And uh, we can give praise when, when it's due. But we need to be careful we don't praise the wicked. L look at Proverbs 28, verse 4. Th this is, uh, I find this really intriguing how he puts this. Proverbs 28, 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. That gives you something to think about, doesn't it? But such as keep the law, contend with them. You know, when we uh, decide that we don't have to obey the law, what we're doing is we're saying, yeah, wicked are right. They're, that's a good way to go. Uh, there's probably a, a few different applications you could make there, make there. But praising others and accepting praise. What are some of God's recommendations on, in this area of uh, boasting and, and praise and so on? And, and I found it interesting if you look these words up, um, boast in verse 1 and praise in verse 2 are exactly the same word in Hebrew. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Um, so there's a, there's a good side and a bad side to it. Some of God's recommendations on this, one is that we live today. He doesn't want us to boast about tomorrow. He wants us to live now. You know, you can, you can ruin your life with the past and the future. You can be all messed up about what happened or you can be all... Just waiting for, you know, you can be a gonna do person and it's always something in the future, but you live life now and uh, we, need to, we need to live it. In uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and, and verse 2, a very familiar verse, the, the last part of the verse, behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. You know, it's not the, it's not the past, it's, it's not the future exactly, uh, it's, it's really now. And what we often do instead, and this, I think this is a really important part of this point tonight, instead of obeying the Lord, we harden our hearts. And that's the Bible term for it. We harden our hearts. Um, there's a verse in Hebrews where he, he brings this up and he relates it to Israel. Hebrews 3 and verse 15. He says, while it is said... This is a quote then. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. You know, when God ha has something for you to do, not to do it is to harden your heart. You know, we don't usually think of it that way. We think, oh, I'll, I'll do it later. <laughs> I guess there's a Patch the Pirate song, to delay is to disobey. My dad said exactly the same thing. <laughs> you know? He wasn't Patch the Pirate, but uh, it's the, the truth is the truth. And, you know, if you're supposed to do something and you say, I'll do it later, that means, you know, we used to say, 
and uh, my dad was my principal and my teacher o often, which is really frustrating. But uh, <laughs> if you ever said to him, oh, I, f you know, I forgot to do my homework. Yeah. No, you didn't forget. You refused. <laughs> I didn't understand that as a kid. I, I do as an adult. Now, it, you might not think of that phrase, hardening your heart with your homework, but uh, really, you, you're supposed to do it. Nah, I'll do it later. Well, later never comes. Uh, we need to be careful as Christians. Uh, Pharaoh was a great example in the Old Testament of the wrong way to go about things. You remember as Moses would come with the different things, you know, and if you don't let the people go, this is going to happen, and he'd harden his heart. And God would have to whip him, you know, one way or another. The, the one time it was frogs, frogs and everything. And then he, you know, he'd harden his heart so the frogs came. Well, then Mo Moses comes back and, and he says, okay, I'm sorry. Take away the frogs. And it's such a strange passage. You'll have to read it yourself. He, he, Moses says, well, when do you want me to take him away? He says, um, tomorrow. <laughs> you think, <laughs> come on, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> frogs everywhere. Um, anyway, live today. You know, we, we don't want to boast about tomorrow. We don't have, we don't have to... Uh, worry about that so much. We, we need to live today. Secondly, be humble. You know, he says uh, we don't have to praise ourselves and uh, that kind of thing. There, there's a great example of this in Luke chapter 7. It, it's the centurion who sends to Jesus to heal his, I believe it was his servant. Uh, Luke chapter 7. And his attitude, let me read it to you in verses 6 and 7. Um, the centurion sent friends to him, that's to Jesus, saying, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I'm not worthy that thou shouldst enter into, under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. That was his attitude. But here's what the people said about him in verses 3 and, three and following. When he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation and hath built us a synagogue. Yeah, that's a great example of what we've just read in Proverbs, isn't it? Uh, he, he didn't praise himself. Let another one praise you. He, he took a humble attitude. And the people that were coming to Jesus said, this is a good man. You know, you should help him. Uh, his attitude was, was a good one. But you know, whatever we do, whether we're proud or we're humble, uh, there's... There's consequences either way. In uh, Luke chapter 18 is the account or the parable, I should say, Jesus gives of the, the Pharisee and the publican. They both went to pray. The, uh, the Pharisee, very proud. The publican, very humble. And uh, Jesus' comment at the end is, I tell you, this man, that's, that's the humble man, went down to his house justified rather than the other. Here's, here's the, the point. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Yeah, you, can, you can boast if you want, but God will bring you down. Or you can be genuinely humble, and God will bless you. Uh, now, you, be careful. You, you can have a false humility. Uh, you can get so caught up in being humble that really your, your eyes are on yourself rather than on Jesus. Our trust is in the Lord and, and not, not in ourselves. Uh, another great verse on this, of course, is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12, where he says, We dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. If you get the right comparison, you can look really good. <laughs> uh, but our pattern is the Lord. You know, it's not each other. God has different callings and different ways he's blessed and different ways he wants to use us. And you know, There's a lot of differences between us. But the common ground is the Lord. And uh, we need to be careful that we, we take a humble attitude. Live today, be humble. The third thing that I think relates to this that the Lord recommends is praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, you don't have to praise yourself. Praise the Lord. Uh, there's stacks of verses. You look up the word praise sometimes. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. And uh, let me just read you a, a couple of them. Psalm 44, verse 8, for instance. In God we boast all the day long. 
and praise thy name forever. You're going to boast, boast about the Lord. Uh, another one, Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, I should have kept where I was. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, verse 17 and 18. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. We don't have to praise ourselves. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14 is probably one you know. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. We can glory in the Lord. That's a good thing. One more, Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. That's a great picture, isn't it? And it's a, a reality. You know, we don't offer burnt sacrifices anymore. But we can offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. What a, what a blessing it is. Uh, we don't have to praise ourselves. We can praise the Lord. And while we don't want to boast about tomorrow, we do want to plan ahead. All right? Now, God is not encouraging you here in, in Proverbs 27 to be irresponsible. Now look at verses 23 and following of chapter 27. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation? The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. Now, we do need to plan ahead. Uh, don't be so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. Uh, you know, when, uh, when you need to uh, go over and get something, go over and get it. Don't just pray about it. <laughs> you know, there's some physical activity that we have to be involved in. Uh, while God, God doesn't want us to live for riches, uh, he does want us to be diligent. There's a lot of verses pro about that. Proverbs 23, verse, verses 4 and 5, for instance. Labor not to be rich. Man, you couldn't be clearer than that, could you? Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. <laughs> uh, great verse about money. God wants us to plan ahead and, and be diligent. Uh, as he talked there in, in those verses, he's basically just talking about using what you have. And if you got goats, milk them. If you've got a field, grow some wheat, and that kind of thing. Use what you have. There's an old saying, make hay while the sun shines. Use the time God gives you. Use the things that God, God gives you. Be timely. Be diligent. Uh, Jesus' illustration of this in uh, Matthew chapter 6, and we often sing these verses, seek ye first the kingdom of God, uh, is not saying don't plan ahead. Uh, in Matthew 6, he, he he brings up this idea in verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Now, he's not saying they don't plan ahead. He's not saying they don't be diligent. He's saying don't worry. Don't live for, for those things. Uh, birds plan ahead. I don't know if you noticed, they build nests. <laughs> Bees plan ahead. Man, they really plan ahead. Uh, God is saying here, don't worry. Put God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. The problem is we get things in the way. We put things first. We need to put God first. Uh, do what you do for the glory of God. Do what you do for the praise of the Lord, and you'll find that it'll all even itself out.
Some good, good verses there in, in that chapter about praise and, and, and planning. Any comments or questions before we take some prayer requests tonight? I hope you're getting a blessing out of, out of these lessons from Proverbs. There's just so much in there, it's hard to know where to quit, but uh, we'll quit there for tonight. Let's take some